What's up guys, how you doing? So, as I previously stated before I was going to share my VA experiences with reapplying for the caregivers program. Um, before I continue, I would like to ask you guys to do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, um, hit the alert button, like and comment, all right? Do me a favor, just like and comment. The more we share, um, the better off other veterans are able to share their experiences and we are able to, you know, overcome roadblocks or obstacles that are in a way that are preventing us from becoming service connected, all right? Um, so, on the caregivers program, uh, today I had to reapply because I switched caregivers. Uh, due to an unfortunate event, um, I had to switch caregivers. Um, I'll explain why, but there are three ways to get out of the program. One, you stop going to appointments based on the, the service connection your caregivers program is based upon. Um, I'll explain that in a few. Uh, two, you decide to switch caregivers. Three, you decide to leave the program. So those are the three ways to no longer be in the program. Um, so we're gonna begin. Uh, one of the things that I was previously, um, I guess, wrong for was that I was told that we didn't need to be under the same household, but I guess we do, because uh, my caregiver needed to provide state ID and ver address verification that we were under the same household. Um, second, she, my caregiver was, was explained that uh, the eligibility process, you know, what would require for me to be eligible. And since I've already been in the program, you know, I'm already eligible for it. Uh, three is benefits. Uh, my caregiver was explained the benefits that uh, they would be getting. And it is a stipend, monthly stipend. The stipend consists of uh, what the state, your state pays for a home attendant or health aid on an hourly rate. And how many hours, you know, that uh, caregiver would be working with you. Um, the other one is uh, counseling services. And the third one would be health insurance. If you have health insurance, stick with it because you can't double dip with the VA's health insurance as well. Um, and if you don't have health insurance, go with the health insurance that the VA provides. I heard it was shitty, but something is better than nothing. Um the other thing I wanted to explain was that they reiterated and uh, wanted to emphasize that the caregivers program is a rehab program. You know, they don't expect a lot of people to be on it for such a long time, you know, but it is what it is. If you are to permanent total or um, in your service connection is static, then, you know, it is what it is. You're going to be on it for a long time, but they did want to re uh, uh, emphasize on that. So it is, you know, there's nothing I could do about that. Um, but I would like to share with you guys. Um, the next one, what I wanted to explain is how I stated before that if you quit going to, you know, to an appointment for six months based on what your, uh, the caregivers program, program uh, service connection is for, then uh, you will be terminated from the program. So <clears throat> an example, me, PTSD, that's what my caregivers program is based upon. If I quit going to my psychologist, psychiatrist, um, then for six months, if I stop going to the appointments, then I will be terminated from the program. So that's what that means. Even though my, you know, I'm service connected for other things, it is based on the highest rating that you have. And PTSD is my highest rating. So that's what the caregivers program is based upon. Um, and the other thing that we were going through is uh, key points on what the pro uh, the program consists of and, you know, helps out upon. Um, and the last few things were, you know, questionnaires. Questionnaires, which is uh, on the ADLs. And ADL is uh, activities of daily living. Um, and these questions consist of eating, um, grooming, bathing, dressing, toileting, devices, mobility. Um, those are the first few um, in regards to helping you out. Um, and what they're looking for when you answer those questions, you know, obviously, um, I, you know, I go through certain things. So because it's PTSD, you know, how would it affect eating? Well, you know, sometimes people tend to, you know, when they go through the depressive state, you know, you don't want to eat for shit, you know? And then when you are served, are you eating yourself? No, you're not, you know? Uh, so what they're looking for, the key points that they're looking for is, do they hand feed you? 
do they have to parade your food in order for you to eat because maybe you're just you rather drink it you know it's just the way you're thinking um, so that's what they're looking for if they hand feed you the food now if they have to do it all the time that's a four if they have to do it more than 50% of the time, that's a three. If they do it between 25 to 49% of the time, that's a two. And, you know, if they do it sometimes, that's a one. So, you know, that's how, that's what the scoring system is like. Um, so, for each one, like grooming, do they have to cut your hair? How many times a, a, a month do they cut your hair? Uh, the other one, bathing. Do they physically bathe you? Um... Toileting, do they physically wipe your ass? You know, if you have a pee jug, you know, do they, you know, let's say your back goes out, do they, you know, go and grab the pee jug for you? Or you don't feel like getting up for the day, you know, how do you go to the bathroom? You know, you can't get up, you know, um, there's certain things like, you know, that, that they would assist you, assist you on toileting. Uh, mobility, you know, when you're unable to get up or, you know, or don't want to get up, you're depressed, whatever it is. Um, and devices, you know, so the devices can be TENS unit, it can be braces, you know, uh, for a carpal tunnel or anything like that, you know, or you get a back brace or neck brace or whatever it is that you, you know, type of braces that you have or TENS unit, electrical unit that you're having. Those are devices that, you know, and they will rate you based on how many times in a month they would help you out with things. So like, you know, wiping your ass, do they wipe your ass all the time? You know, that would be a four, you know, if they wipe your ass, uh, 75% of the time, you know, well, 50% or more, then that would be a three. If they wipe your ass uh, 25 to 49%, that would be a two. Um, and if it's sometimes, that would be a one, you know, so it all depends on the scoring system. Um, the other one would be finances. Do they help you financially? Um, so, you know, if they pay all the bills for you, obviously you get paid. But they have to pay all the bills, you know, go to manage your, your finances through your own account, you know, because you just can't do it. You just don't want to do it or you just don't feel like doing it. Um, and they do it on a monthly basis. They take care of you. Uh, medications. Do they, uh, they have to feed, you know, get, give you your medication. Make sure you take your medications. Um, the other one is uh, <sighs> how many times do they help with the service connection? So meaning that. You got, you got a back problem, and that's what you're mainly service connected for. You know, that's the highest rating that you have. Um, and that's what the caregivers program is based upon. Um, how many times do they help you with, uh, with you know, mobility, how moving around, or anything like that? Um, so that's what uh, one of the questions is. So you have to answer properly. You know, do I, you know, is it 100% of the time? Is it more than 50%? Is it more than 25% or is it more than, you know, 0%? Um, and that's what the the one, two, three, four is like. Now, when I meant from eating, grooming, bathing, uh, toileting, device, and mobility, you will get, you will get uh, rated based on that. And that would be, you know, you will be put on a tier. And if you are one through 12, you know, one through 12 will get you, you know, tier one. Uh, 13 to 20 will get you tier two and 21 to and up will get you tier three. So based on all of those, the eating grooming, if you get it four, three, two, and it all adds up to 21 or more, you would be, you know, I wouldn't consider all of them be, be a tier three, but you would be qualified for tier three, which is the highest rating. And in New York city, tier three is about, uh, three, a little over $3,000. And if you need aid and assistance, you can apply for that on um, on the e-benefits program, um, which is on top of what it is. And the way that works is, let's say your caregiver, you have a kid and your caregiver helps you out with your kid, um, you know, they will get paid extra. Um, so those are little things in here that today I was able to grab all that information for. Um, why I ask so many questions is because Again, I want to share with you guys, you know, and the more I am informed, the better I can help my buddies out, my brothers, my sisters uh, with becoming service connected or jumping on the service care program, uh, uh, service caregiver program, you know, and help you guys out. But on Tuesday, I'll be going for my appointment, um, which would be the eligibility pro uh, appointment for through my provider. 
Um, hoping I do get into the program and see what happens, you know. Um, I probably will be looking at a tier one, you know, it is what it is, but anything is better than nothing, you know, at the end of the day. So, whatever. But again, subscribe, you know, uh, hit the alert button, like, and comment, all right? Um, I'll be giving you more information, all right, guys? Take care. Bye bye.